What's going on, engineers? Rust is a language that I've been wanting to learn for a while, so I thought maybe we could just learn it together. So this will be the beginning of a mini-series called Let's Learn Rust. For those of you who are hearing about Rust for the first time right now, it's a language that's been in 1.0 for a few years now, and it aims to be a significant improvement over a language like C++. Rust, like C++, is a high-performance, statically typed, and ahead-of-time compiled language. Two significant improvements that Rust makes are, first, there's no need to directly manipulate memory in Rust like you would do in C++. So with that, you get really strong memory safety guarantees. What this does in effect is it makes it so you'll never access memory that is invalid, which means our, a proper Rust program should never seg fault. And it does this through a really strict compiler and compile time checks. If you write code that could possibly seg fault, the compiler is going to reject it and make you fix it. In this video, we're gonna look at a total of four things. We're gonna look at how to get Rust installed. We're gonna look at their cargo and crate system. We're gonna look at what a typical Rust project structure looks like. And then we'll try to get like a hello world program running. So let's jump in. Rust runs on tons of different platforms. So whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows, or otherwise, head to this link here. If you're on a Unix-like OS, which includes also Linux and Mac, they offer a one-liner, which you could just copy into a terminal and install it like that. This is definitely the easiest way. So I will open my terminal here and I will run that. It says downloading installer, proceed with installation. I'm gonna pick number one and then it's done. Now mine finished instantly, but yours might take a minute or so depending on your internet connection. I just, I already had mine installed. If you're on Windows, there's an exe file you can download here, rustup-init.exe, download that to your system, double click it and follow the on-screen prompts to install Rust. If you're using the Windows subsystem for Linux, then the one liner that's used for Mac, Linux and other Unix like operating systems is the exact same for the Windows subsystem for Linux. To verify Rust is installed, open your terminal and do either rustc version or cargo version and you should see the name and a version number there. If you do see that, then Rust is installed. There's two tools that we're going to look at. The first is Rust-C, which is the Rust compiler, and then there's Cargo, which is the Rust build system. I have a very basic Rust program here, which all it does is print out Hello World. If I want to compile this, I can come to my terminal and I can use Rust-C. So I do Rust-C and I specify the name of the file, and then it will create a binary in that folder called test. When I run test, I can see I get the output that I expect. It says Hello World. The second thing we're going to look at is Cargo. Rust-C is fine if you have a couple files, you can compile them, it's no big deal. But imagine you have a larger project with a bigger kind of file structure that contains, say, hundreds of files. You're not going to want to use Rust-C on all that. So they offer Cargo, the build system, to allow you to just build it all in one command. So to create a new Rust project, create a folder. I create one called A080, and then inside that, run Cargo init. When I ran cargo init, this created a couple things of interest. The first it created is a source folder, which will contain all my Rust source files, and then it created a cargo.toml. If we look in the source file, we see one file called main.rs, and we see the contents is actually exactly like my test file. Inspecting the cargo.toml file, we can see that it contains some metadata about my project, as well as a section called dependencies. Dependencies is where you would add any crates that your program might depend on. Now crates, you say, what is that? Well, crates is the Rust package repository that contains tons of pre-built code that are packaged into these things called crates. We can pop up in our browser and go to crates.io to see a list of these. Now this is the exact same concept as like Python pip or Node.js's NPM or any other kind of moduling system. So say I found a crate I wanted, something like say, you know, log, Rust library providing a lightweight logging facade. What I can do is if I want to include this in my project, I can simply copy this right here and then drop it under dependencies. The next time I run cargo run, it will automatically download that dependency to my system. At this point, I'm ready to run my project and I do so with cargo run. Now, before I click enter, cargo run does two things. First thing it does is it downloads any dependencies that's changed, removed, or added since you've last ran your program. Now, the second thing it does is it compiles everything in your source directory and then actually runs it. So let's do cargo run and see what happens. You can see they updated the registry, downloaded the actual log, crate, and then ran the program. Using cargo has another added benefit in that if you were creating your own crate, then it would already be in the format to be able to get published to crates.io. Now remember I said that Cargo will compile and run multiple files together, so I add a second file here called hello.rs. I put a function called say hello, and then I'm just outputting hello again. Back in my main file, I'm using that file to say hello a second time from the main file. I now have two .rs files, but it doesn't matter because when I come to my terminal and I do cargo run, it just compiles everything together and then it runs properly. And don't worry if you don't understand any of the syntax, we're going to go into depth in a lot of that in future videos. 
However, the one thing I will say is just like the main function in C or C++ or Java, the main function in Rust is the main function that will run as soon as you execute your binary. This becomes the entry point to your application. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off and we'll start digging into the actual core of Rust and start looking at language features as well as other syntax. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in the video, please leave it below in the comments section. Other than that, I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.